Hey everyone, uh, today I'm going to be showcasing this minimap feature that I've been uh, implementing in Pixel World over the last couple of weeks. I'm really proud of how it came out and the general just implications it has for gameplay. So a minimap feature in general adds a ton of like player world awareness and in a procedurally generated world that has a lot of like exploration you can easily get lost and it's nice to be able to find your way back to something say a quest where you might have died where you might be spawning etc etc so it's really kind of it's really brought the world together as you play and i'm really excited that i was able to find a implementation that worked most minimap features that i saw people making in unity they used a, a camera to just get a zoomed out view of the world and that didn't really work that great because I only generate a small chunk around the player at a time or render a small chunk around the player at a time because it's procedural. Uh, in a game that you already know and you already render the entire level space it makes sense to use a camera uh, because it's already rendered. Um, but in my case, I had to find a workaround, which was actually writing the... As I render the world, every single tile around you, I'm rendering all those tiles as pixels to an image. And that image is what's being used in the top right corner as the minimap. And I'll get into the implementation in a little bit. Uh, if you're interested in how I did it in Unity, I pretty much figured it out completely myself, which I'm really proud of. Um, and it's a pretty sleek implementation that I can scale pretty well uh, into the future. So I'm actually walking around to these guys, uh, to, to some NPCs to see if I can get a quest from any of them uh, to show off the map marker system. I could also just fight something and, <laughs> and lose and then you'd see how that works as well. I love how little islands will generate on the map. So as most maps will work in games, you can press M to make it full screen, use your middle mouse to scroll it around, you can zoom in, zoom out, uh, the pixels are a little blurry, but you can see the individual tiles are each individual pixel, um, and which, whichever zoom level I keep it at, it'll stay like that in the uh, minimap in the top right, so if I zoom way out, then it'll stay in that same zoom level, but the starting zoom level is pretty good, uh, maybe a little bit farther. So it is great to be able to find your way back to where you started. Of course, um, when I generate things like towns or cave entrances, whatever it may be, it'll become way more useful uh, naturally to be able to find your way to landmarks. Let's actually fight an enemy. Uh, so we can see, I just recently added ranged attacks to these slugs. I don't know why he's facing the wrong way while he's fighting me. Won't even look me in the eyes like a man. Alright, so if you uh, check out the map now, there's a little skull and crossbones where I perished. And it sticks to the map um, simply because uh, of the layering that I did inside of Unity. Uh, so that's pretty much an overview. I'm going to jump into the implementation in Unity right now and then uh, afterwards I'll show off like maybe fighting a mini boss, some other new additions, and as well as how uh, the map marker, the other map markers work when you uh, get a quest or whatnot. I'll be right back. All right we're back in Unity and this is how the mini map is set up in the canvas. So we've got this uh, border at the very top, the minimap border, which does nothing. And then we have the actual minimap manager, which is the whole game object. Um, it's got a few different things inside of it. And it's also got this script uh, over here that manages pretty much everything minimap related. Uh, there's also map markers, which are separate script, and then the arrow uh, that moves for the player. Right here, they're both separate scripts, but the the actual map and rendering it and whatnot, that's all done inside of here. Uh, and then we just have a holder. This minimap holder holds the image 
uh, that gets rendered, as well as the arrow. There are two separate things that are underneath the minimap, uh, and they move independently, so that's why they're siblings of each other. And then the map markers are a child of the image because they actually, as the, the map image moves, we want the markers to move with them. And then we have the these like test markers um, inside of here that we could turn real quick, but they're underneath the player arrow. So if I turn on the quest marker, there's a little uh, exclamation point and there's a camp marker right there. So those are just test markers that get duplicated. So let's get into the actual script. Uh, for the most part, uh, the general image is all drawn right here. So as we are rendering the world, we call this add chunk to minimap. So each chunk that we're adding, that we're rendering in the world has um, and a coordinate for where that chunk actually is, as well as a list of tiles. And we just feed it straight into the minimap, and we check if we've already visited it. If we haven't, then we actually want to draw them to the minimap, otherwise we've already done it. Otherwise that fog of war has already been revealed. Pretty simple. And then we want to draw the chunk to the minimap. So we take in the same stuff we took in before and we want to get a pixel color list um, so we're basically replacing that chunk tile list and we're converting it to the colors that we want to actually apply so we go for each tile and we, um, we get the color for that tile we have that set elsewhere and it's just a predetermined value that we inputted uh, for each tile. And then uh, we add it to the pixel color list. We have this array. We just convert that list to an array. And then we set those pixels to this map texture image. And then we apply them. It's that simple for drawing those pixels to the minimap. Um, you just have to have the list of tiles that you're trying to render. So it's good to do it while you're rendering them uh, to the tile map. So before you render them to the tile map, you also render them to the minimap. Uh, and then from there, we have a couple of other methods to open the full screen map, uh, close the full screen map, uh, getting the start point, which is important because uh, there's an offset for the image. So otherwise the coordinates for the pixels because that's a very important distinction is the pixel uh, coordinate versus the world coordinate. So we have to offset that by the center of the map. So it takes the map height and width, and then it just gets the middle. And then we, um, then that's where the player is starting. So the start of the player is the center of the map. And then that's how we get the offset. And we use that offset for everything, essentially. Uh, and then we also have a center map function that's called when you close the map just for, um, so you don't like lose it when you're scrolling around. And then when you close the mini map, it goes back to center because it's always centered. Uh, and then there's a zoom map feature for when you scroll using your scroll wheel. And when you're dragging the map around, and then these are just checks for when those are happening. And that's pretty much the whole minimap manager. Uh, it's not too dense, pretty well commented, pretty uh, straightforward. Uh, but then we have the map marker manager. We just have a function for adding markers. All we need is the marker type and the position. Map markers are defined here just basically by their type and their coordinates. Uh, so that makes a new map marker. We have a list of map markers that we always hold on to right here. And then we actually add it to the anchor position uh, that'll place it correctly onto over that map image. Um, yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, mini map through the player arrow, pretty straightforward. Whenever um, the player changes their direction they're facing, we feed that direction in 
and then we just rotate uh, accordingly, rotate the arrow accordingly. And yeah, that's the whole minimap. It's pretty simple and I think because of its simplicity, it can scale really well and I can customize it completely because I came up with uh, all the code myself. Uh, and I'm planning to expand it so when you, obviously when you walk off of that map image, because it has a default of 2048 by 2048, I could make that bigger, or I just have to generate a new image uh, or a new texture when you move off of that uh, block. And so you can continue on generating uh, more of the map. And then there'll just be a bunch of map uh, segments that you can like piece together or pull up whenever someone walks into them. Uh, yeah, so that's the implementation. I'm going to jump back into the game. Uh, stay tuned and I'll show you some more about how the map markers work and we'll fight some new enemies that I've added to the game. All right, we are back in the game now. So I just wanted to walk around a bit uh, in the world, maybe fight some stuff, show you how some of the new map markers are working, show you some of the new enemies. Uh, just give you a debrief. I haven't posted a video in about a month, so I just wanted to uh, get into more in-depth stuff than I normally do. So straight off the bat, <laughs> I'm gonna jump in this campsite. Uh, you've probably seen this feature already, but now it sets your spawn point, which is good to know. And it adds a actual map marker on the map that you can see there. Um, that's pretty nifty so you know where you're going to spawn uh, next time. Uh, so both of the enemies on screen right now I've actually made changes to. I've been exploring different just enemy types. So this geese, if you get too close to them, like you do in real life, they get aggravated. So this is the first aggro enemy that when you get within proximity, they'll just immediately attack. So if you get too close to a goose, they are not going to have it. Um, and I've been working on, I fixed a bug the other day where there was an issue with uh, the enemies just like spamming attacks. And uh, that definitely was crazy when uh, I added a ranged enemy because when they fire like 12 different ranged bullets at the same time, it's uh, a little unfair. So. Now, uh, it's a little bit better, a bit of, a li everything's a little bit more well-timed uh, with enemies, and if you're decent at dodging, you shouldn't even get hit, but I'm still working on balancing, uh, for sure, everything, so like balancing loot, as well as progress in the game and the enemies you can fight as you go, uh, another enemy that I added the range to that you might have seen earlier was a slug so when they get about three tiles away from you they'll start attacking and uh, I'm pretty happy with how it came out these are the same bullets uh, that uh, the player gets to shoot off when they when you have a staff actually uh, and that's like quickly made slugs from like the easiest enemy to kill to one of the hardest which I think is really cool um, these big, big old banana boys uh, deserve better than they had before, in my opinion. So, so yeah. Uh, and if I walk around a little bit more, you can see uh, both of those map markers right next to each other. And you may have noticed that I spawned in the campsite, which is cool. So, right now, it's there's a decent amount of progression, and I'm trying to just get be able to play more and more of the game for myself um, just to, to get an idea of how fun it is um, and you could sort of progress through the world and fight different monsters uh, you might die but you'll encounter a camp along the way so you just respawn there it's you're not trekking all the way back and losing your progress which is nice you can heal inside of those camps as well I'd like to add uh, maybe cooking to those campfires in the future, so, and maybe like meat or fish uh, to get some better, better foods going. Uh, all of this is feature creep. I'm just trying to get to uh, 
a less buggy version of the game right now. Uh, there's definitely issues with uh, prefab copying that I'm struggling with and uh, but as I clear up more and more bugs like obviously this flashing goose could be fixed in the animation controller web that I've created um, but also I added a fox uh, which I'm actually really happy with how it looks and its animations are extremely adorable uh, but Maybe they could be honed. Oh, he does a lot of damage, actually. So, enemies do scale with you, um, which is cool. And they're not they are not all going to have the same amount of damage. NPCs get more damage as you level up, too. Uh, you might have noticed that there was no camp site there. Uh, that's just because there's no, like... I'm not saving everything I load. All the game objects aren't saved. The world... The tiles, they're all exactly the same, uh, but the game objects, all the bushes and trees and whatnot, I need to actually save them and then load them instead of loading new stuff every single time, which is a huge undertaking and it might not be in the, the demo that I make, uh, but it will be in the game eventually, of course. So you can buy some different staffs from this guy. Um, but yeah, that's that's a general update of what I've added. I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, if you want to get more granular updates, you can check out my Twitter, uh, which I will try and post more on, and Instagram. Uh, I post stuff about uh, where I get a lot of my inspiration from, which is a lot of just like local wildlife. Most of the enemies I've added to the game are based on real things that I've taken pictures of, which is really fun and cool just like bringing my real life ecosystem into this game which i've really enjoyed so far um but yeah give me a like uh and i'll catch you all next time bye, -bye.